Good morning. Before we get started, do you remember the last three memory verses? First Corinthians six fourteen a. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Psalms twenty eight seven. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart exalts thee, and with my song I shall thank him. In Exodus thirty four fourteen. Do not worship any other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. As you listen to today's story, Ruth and Boaz, think about these questions. Number one, what rich man of Bethlehem showed much kindness to Ruth? Number two, how did Boaz help Ruth? Number three, what did Boaz have to do according to the custom in order to marry Ruth? Number four, how did God bless Ruth later? And number five, what was the name of Ruth and Boaz's son? Ruth and Boaz. It was harvest time in Bethlehem. The grain was ripe in the fields. The reapers were busy cutting the grain and binding it into bundles. As was the custom among the Israelites, the reapers left some stalks of grain for the poor to gather. When Ruth heard of this custom, she asked Naomi, Let me go to the fields and glean from the grain that is left. Go, my daughter, Naomi answered. It happened that Ruth began to glean in the field of a very rich man named Boaz. When he came to see how his servants were getting along with the reaping, he saw a strange young woman picking up the grain that had been dropped. Who is she? he asked. The overseer explained, she is the Moabite maiden who came back with Naomi. She asked permission to glean after the reapers. Ever since, she has worked steadily without resting. Boaz watched as Ruth worked patiently among the people who were strange to her. He knew she was trying to find food for Naomi and herself. No wonder Boaz admired this beautiful young woman. Boaz told Ruth, Young woman, do not go to another field to glean, but work with my maidens here. When you are thirsty, you may get a drink from the water jars. Ruth was very thankful for his kindness. She bowed her head and asked, Why are you so kind to me, a foreigner? I've heard about your kindness to your mother-in-law since your husband died. Boaz said, I have heard how you left your own people and came to a people who were strangers to you. May the Lord reward you with many blessings because you trust in him. Ruth's heart was warmed by these kind words. When mealtime came, Boaz invited Ruth to eat lunch with his servants. Treat her kindly and be sure to leave some grain for her to gather, he told his workers. By evening, Ruth had a bushel of grain. She carried it to Naomi. Ruth had even saved part of her lunch for Naomi. Naomi was surprised to see so much grain. Where did you glean today, she asked. Ruth told her about Boaz and his kindness. And Naomi said, Boaz is one of my husband's relatives. It is good that you are working in his field. And all during the harvest, Ruth gleaned grain from Boaz's field. When the harvest was over, there was a feast. Rich and poor rejoiced together because God had given them food for another year. Naomi sent Ruth to Boaz's feast. When Boaz recognized Ruth, he said, May the Lord bless you, young woman. Even though you do not have a husband, you have not followed after the young man. Everyone in the city knows you are a good woman. Now I was closely related to your husband who died. Yet there was one person who was more closely related than I. Ruth listened. According to the custom, she knew her husband's closest relative was expected to marry her and care for Naomi. Tomorrow, Boaz said, I will talk to the other relative about this. If he will give up his rights, I would like to very much have you for my wife. Boaz told Ruth how much he loved her. When Ruth got home, she gave Naomi the grain Boaz had sent and told her what had happened. How excited Ruth was. Naomi said, tomorrow you will know for sure whether Boaz can marry you. He will not rest until he has taken care of the matter. When Boaz got up in the morning, he went to the city gate to see his relatives. Before the ten elders of the city, the relatives said he could not marry Ruth and care for Naomi. Boaz told the elders, you are witnesses that I want to marry Ruth and care for Naomi. We are witnesses, the elder said, and they asked the Lord to bless Ruth and Boaz. When Ruth and Boaz were married, he took her to live in his own house. 
how happy they were. Naomi was happy too, for Ruth and Boaz were good to her. Later, a little boy was born to Ruth and Boaz. Naomi loved being grandmother to little Obed. She helped Ruth care for him. How good God was to them. Now let's answer the questions from earlier. Number one, what rich man of Bethlehem showed much kindness to Ruth? Boaz. Number two, how did Boaz help Ruth? He let her gleam in the fields and made sure she was treated well. Number three, what did Boaz have to do according to the custom in order to marry Ruth? He will go to his relatives and ask him to give up his right to marry Ruth so he can marry her. Number four, how did God bless Ruth later? She and Boaz were married and God gave them a little son. And number five, what was the name of Ruth and Boaz's son? Obed. This week's memory verse is James 1 and 2. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Think about it. Grandma's gift. As a ninth grader, Dave was the smallest kid in his high school. But at five feet tall and 90 pounds, he was a perfect candidate for the lightest weight class on the school's wrestling team. Dave started out as a JV lightweight, but moved up to the varsity position when the boy at that spot moved away. Unfortunately, Dave's first year was not won for the record books. Of the six varsity matches he wrestled, he was pinned six times. Dave had a dream of someday being a good enough wrestler to receive his athletic letter. An athletic letter is a cloth emblem with the school's initials on it which is awarded to those athletes who demonstrate exceptional performance in their sports. Those who were fortunate enough to receive a letter proudly wore it on their school letterman jacket. Whenever Dave shared his dream of lettering and wrestling, most of his teammates and friends just laughed. Those who did offer encouragement to Dave usually said something like, well, it's not whether you win or lose, or it's not really important whether you letter or not. Even so, Dave was determined to work hard and keep improving as a wrestler. Every day after school, Dave was in the weight room trying to build up his strength, or running the stadium bleachers trying to increase his endurance, or in the wrestling room trying to improve his technique. The one person who continually believed in Dave was his grandmother. Every time she saw him, she reminded him of what could be done through the prayer and hard work. She told him to keep focused on his goal. Over and over again, she quoted scripture verses to him like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. The day before the next season began, Dave's grandmother passed away. He was heartbroken. If he ever did reach his goal of someday getting a high school letter, his grandmother would never know. That season, Dave's opponent faced a new person. What they expected was an easy victory. What they got instead was a ferocious battle. Dave won nine of his first 10 matches that year. Midway through the season, David's coach called him into the office to inform him that he would be receiving his high school letter. Dave was ecstatic. The only thing that could have made him feel better was to be able to share it with his grandmother, if only she knew. Just then, the coach smiled as he presented Dave with an envelope. The envelope had Dave's name written on it. In his grandmother's handwriting, he opened it and read, Dear Dave, I knew you could do it. I set aside $100 to buy you a school jacket to put your letter on. I hope you'll wear it proudly. And remember, you can do all things in Christ who gives you strength. Congratulations from Grandma. After David finished reading the letter, his coach reached behind him and pulled out a brand new jacket with the school letter attached and Dave's name embroidered on the front. Dave realized then that his grandmother did know after all. Application. Christ does give us the strength to achieve great things, and sometimes the power of Christ comes to us through other people. Dave was motivated to work hard because of the encouragement he received from his grandmother. His grandmother was, in a very real sense, the power of Christ working in his life. Likewise, when we encourage and support one another, We are allowing Christ to work through us in a powerful way. 
Are you an encouraging person? Too often we are like Dave's friends and teammates. We cut each other down and discourage each other so much that we lose heart. But when we have even one person who believes in us, we find the strength to work hard and to reach our potential. One person who never stops believing in us is God. Others may put us down, but our Heavenly Father believes in us so much that he gave his son to die for us. Romans 5 and 8. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Memory verse. Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. James 1 and 2. This concludes today's lesson.